Good morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse. It is Saturday, January 28th, and today we're talking about different animal tracks that you can find out there. Um, some of them you could see right now. Now that we have a little bit of snow, you probably have some in your backyard, and some of them would be more in the summertime, but We've got a whole mix of different things that we will show you today. As always, if you have any questions, you can throw those in the comments. If you have any sightings, we'd love to know what you're seeing in your backyard or if you've got animal tracks that are in your backyard, which ones you are seeing. And uh, you can always just say hi. You can throw those in the comments as well. We are um, doing our calendar for the year ahead. So we're starting to schedule some different talks and different events. So if you have any ideas of topics that you'd like us to cover, throw those in the comments as well, because um, we are uh, we are open to a whole bunch of different things. So if there's a certain topic that you have some interest in, throw those in the comments and we'll see what we can do as far as getting some programming on it, um, whether getting a speaker in here or doing a live stream about it. Um, we'd love to know what kind of things you guys are interested in. So definitely let's get started. First of all, here at the store, if you are in the Rochester area, we do have our jigsaw puzzle swap going on this whole weekend. Usually we just do it for one day. But because tomorrow is National Puzzle Day, we are having it all weekend long. Not only are there a whole bunch of puzzles here for you to choose from where you can bring yours in, swap them out for some new to you puzzles, um, but we do have them all on sale as well. So anything in stock puzzle wise is all 10% off. So we've got quite a few for you to choose from and you can take advantage of that sale that we've got going on for National Puzzle Day. So that's going on all weekend long. We're open open today, which is Saturday from 10 till 6. And then tomorrow on Sunday, we are open 10 till 4. So we're open all weekend long for you to take advantage of that. But let's get started with some different animal tracks. Now that we've got some snow, I know I am seeing some animal tracks, even in just in my backyard, a whole bunch of different kinds. Um, there are different types and groups of animal tracks and they look different depending on the kind of animal that are creating them. Mammals, for example, will have different what are called gates. Sometimes their um, their tracks are close together if they're walking. If they're jumping, they can look different. If they're trotting, going kind of fast, the tracks can look different as well. Um, so they can look a little bit different as far as the separation of the, the tracks go, um, but the prints should look in general <clears throat> the same, um, depending uh, as far as the, the uh, for the species, as far as each species goes. So mammal tracks, you tend to have the toes, you've got the, the, the pads of the feet going on there with the mammal tracks. Um, bird tracks are other types of tracks. Um, what are called herp tracks. So that's going to be reptiles, amphibians. Um, their tracks can look quite a bit different. Usually there's some kind of uh, marking of a tail and you can see where they've kind of been, you know, walking on the on the ground where they've been dragging their body. So th they can look quite a bit different than other tracks. There's even insect tracks. So we'll go over some of the more common tracks that you can find here in the upstate New York area. And most of those are going to be mammal tracks. So here's just showing some of the different tracks and how they can look quite a bit different depending on what kind of animal you have. Like the mammal track here on the left, bird tracks up in the top, and then it looks like some kind of a lizard there on the bottom where you can see that tail was dragging through the sand. So here are some different animal tracks that you could see in the Rochester area right now. And we'll go over the descriptions of them and then you can, uh, you can, you know, guess which kind of tracks there, but we'll, um, we'll tell you what made the track after describing them. So this is the first one. It's quite, quite small. You can find them in the snow or in the mud. Um, you can see the marks of the tail and you can see the little, little paw prints here and depending on what the what the track is in, if it's mud, you can usually see the claws um, a little bit better. So this says in mud, heels and toes may be visible, but commonly you will find just pads and claws. Five-toed hide prints are about half an inch long, so quite quite small. And four-toed four prints 
are smaller. So really, really small track. Prints will be in groups of four. Look for droppings that look like black grains of rice. So hopefully you see these outside and not inside. Um, but this is going to be a white footed mouse. So their tracks are quite small, tiny, tiny little prints. And you can see how visible that mark of the tail is, which isn't always visible in some of these prints that we'll see. So that is the white footed mouse common track here for better or for worse in upstate New York and probably wherever you are watching this from actually. Now this is probably the most common track you'll find in your backyard. This is what I'm seeing all over my backyard. Um, the arrangement is, is pretty um, easy to recognize as well. So look for small size and V-shaped arrangement. Look for larger and longer hind legs with five clawed toes on the outsides and smaller, again, four clawed, four clawed toes on the insides. So the, the larger footprints are on the outside, smaller are in the inside, and it has that V shape or almost like a W shape. Um, this is going to be your typical gray squirrel. And so this is the arrangement um, that you will see those tracks in. So super common. You probably have some in your backyard right now. If you got any kind of snow um, in, in, in your area, you can probably find these pretty easily in your backyard. The squirrels are active all winter long making those tracks. These you can commonly find, especially by water, by, uh, by any kind of muddy um, substrate, any, any kind of moving water, any kind of ponds. Um, the prints tend to overlap when walking and form a straight line when running. Prints are about an inch and a half wide with a walking stride of six to nine inches apart. The claws are present and during the winter, fur grows in between the toes which can obscure how these kind of look. So it can obscure the pad shape. Trails are usually in zigzags with leap gaps. Irregular track patterns are almost always present due to the animal's erratic foraging strategy. So that is going to be a mink. Um, minks are um, common by water, especially. They are really avid hunters. And so they'll go after, uh, not only if the water is unfrozen, if they can find in the spring and in the summer, they eat a lot of frogs and salamanders and fish. And in the winter months when those might not be as readily available or if they have to go deep into the water to get those, they go more for mammals, they'll go after squirrels. Um, so they're quite voracious. So, but, but look for these prints out by the water because they are active all winter long and um, they are out there hunting. So this is a mink. Um, for size comparison, if you've never seen a mink, they're just like uh, if you went to a pet store and saw a ferret, they're about that size. They can be a little bit bigger and they're they're like a chocolate brown, very dark color. Sometimes they can look quite just black. Um, so keep an eye out for those because they are definitely around. They're pretty common, but they're really secretive too. So they're, they're around, but you just might not see them uh, too, too often. So here are some more prints you can find out there, especially by the water. Um, they look like almost like our hand prints, just smaller. Uh, look for paired prints, a fore and hind print next to each other, five clawed toes, about uh, four inch long hind prints and two inch long fore prints. The fore prints may overlap with the hind prints and the average stride is from 10 to 15 inches. So if you look, look at these, closely, especially those four prints, they look just like our hands, but a little bit smaller. And that is from a raccoon. So another animal that's pretty common, especially by water, they tend to like to rinse their food off before eating it, just um, in, in their habits that they do that. So you can find these, especially in the warmer months, um, you can you can find these pretty often by the water. So if you go hiking anywhere that has streams or has any kind of a shoreline, um, look for a little raccoon prints there in the mud. Now here's another one that's, that is pretty distinctive. Um, this is a, a, a track that has an opposable thumb. So if you look at, especially on the far left here, you can see how there's kind of like a typical looking mammal print, but look at that thumb, how it goes off to the side. It almost looks like an animal that's double jointed. So it's got that 
really opposable thumb there. And so that's on its rear limb. And the prints will measure about two inches and they have a distance between, between them in general of about seven to 10 inches. This is another animal you might find in your backyard, another print you can find all year long. And that is going to be the opossum. And, and you can see here in this drawing how that thumb really sticks out there. So that's a pretty distinctive characteristic there for the opossum. Here's another mammal track. Again, look for opposable thumbs on the rear limbs. Prints measure about two inches. Um, back feet look like small human footprints. So that's going to be an identifying characteristic there. If you look at the back prints, they do look pretty similar, albeit smaller, but similar to human footprints. And that is going to be your skunk, another mammal that's pretty common in the area. You probably have them in your neighborhoods. Um, they tend to burrow under things. They might be under your deck. Um, I know that's happening in our neighborhood, but if you look at those rear footprints, they do look pretty similar to human tracks. So another common mammal we have here in the area. Now this one is pretty neat. This one's a little bit different. With this animal, you want to look for tracks often in mud, again, due to their close proximity to water. With, with five inch long webbed hind feet and smaller three inch long unwebbed foreprints, a foreprint will generally be side by side with a hind print and the tail tends to drag through the prints. So this is a track that has webbed feet, which is different from the other ones we've seen. And the tail drag is another characteristic which is different and you can see those you can see that in these the photo here on the left especially um, the one that was going through the mud or the sand there and that is of a beaver so you might see that in the winter more likely to see these tracks in the warmer months um, but they are active in the winter so you never know you just might happen upon some beaver tracks so look for those webbed hind feet there from the beaver um, this is another common one in your backyard, and this says, look for clusters of four tracks. The four prints will be about one inch round with four toes. The oblong hind prints will be twice as long and usually lined up and positioned just past the four prints. The stride depends on speed. Look also for tunnels in snow or narrow, narrow trails in the grass. And this is just like that squirrel print that has a pretty distinctive look and shape to it. Same with these. To me, it almost looks like um, a face, like two eyes, a nose, and like a surprised face. Um, super common in backyards. You'll probably see the see this in the morning, after uh, after the evening when this animal has been out. And this is going to be your eastern cottontail, and they are active all winter long. You just might not see them because they're going to be more active. Uh, during the, the evening hours right now. Um, but another common backyard animal whose tracks you can find out there right now. So that is your Eastern Cottontail. And then here's another little one that is, I know, common uh, around here, especially in my neighborhood. There seems to be a lot of these. Um, track shows four toes and no claw marks. So a lot of the tracks we've seen so far have a distinctive claw mark where you can see that there's something there that has pushed into the, the dirt or the snow. Um, but this track has no claw marks and that is a very distinctive characteristic of a cat and domestic house cats have these little kind of round paws and then no claw marks because they have those retractable claws. So uh, cat tracks will not have any kind of claw marks. So that goes not only with your domestic house cat, but that's the same with, you know, bobcat or lynx. If you happen to be in an area that has any kind of tracks like, or that has those kind of animals, um, their, their tracks are going to be similar, but larger. And again, no claw marks. So just to show you kind of the opposite of that, here you can definitely see the claw marks. Um, so you can see at the very tops of each toe, there are distinctive claw marks there. So this is a track that has four, uh, each track has four toes with claws present, inverted V-shaped pad with a calloused ridge. The, 
The foot is covered in hair, so the toes may be indistinct. The prints are about two inches long in size, and the stride is about 12 to 16 inches long. This is another pretty common track in the area, and this animal tends to um, have its hind legs go into the same um, area that the that the forelegs were in, so it almost looks like a straight line when they are making their tracks. So it's not side-by-side -side tracks. Most of the time it's a straight line, and that is going to be your red fox, another common animal that we do have here in um in North America, actually. So this is your red fox. We also have a gray fox, um, but the red fox track is really going to be the, the most common one that you'll see here. Something kind of similar, but larger. This is a four-toed track, again, with claws present. An A-shaped pad. So that's going to be right here. You can kind of see it better in this um, the picture of the mud as opposed to the picture of the sand. So the A-shaped pad is larger in the front, the front print and then the smaller hind prints. The prints are about two to two and a half inches in, in size, so they can overlap in size with that red fox track, so that can be a little difficult. Um, and the size of the stride is about 12 to 16 inches long, so pretty long stride. And that is going to be your coyote. Again, maybe not something you'll see in your backyard, but you never know, they, um, they are expanding their ranges, um, but not an uncommon track to see, especially if you're out hiking, if you're out at a park. Um, keep an eye out for those coyote tracks. And now here is another print, uh, claws visible, rounded footprint, so not all too dissimilar from that cat track that we saw, so a round track, but you can really see those claw marks here again claws visible and now this one specifically has a huge size variation because that is going to be your typical domestic dog track so they can range in size from being quite quite large to quite small depending on which dog you're looking at but they do tend to have this rounded track as opposed to the coyote that has kind of more of an elongated track so a rounder foot pad with those claws present is going to be your domestic dog, which is going to be even more common than any of the other uh, canine tracks that we just saw. So these are going to be more common on the actual trails themselves, whereas your coyote tracks or your red fox tracks, you're going to see them kind of go off along the trails. Probably you might see them on the trails themselves, but you'll see them kind of wandering through the woods. So those are some different canine tracks that you can absolutely see around here. And now here's another one that you won't see in the snow or you definitely shouldn't see in the snow, um, but come spring and summer months, you just might get these, and depending on where you are, uh, you could even get them in your backyard. We've certainly had a lot of customers that have had experiences with these animals in their backyard. For this animal, you want to look for paw prints with, again, five claws. Front and back prints may overlo overlap if slowly walking, which is pretty common, so they do kind of um, mash into each other. Front prints measure about four inches and rear prints are roughly six inches long, so a pretty large track. The stride ranges based on the speed from a foot to three to five feet. So it can be quite variable as far as the distance between the tracks, but these are pretty, pretty large tracks and they do tend to overlap on one another. This is going to be your black bear, which talk about animals that are expanding in range. This is another one of those. So you might get them in your backyard. We've certainly had people even in Pittsburgh that have gotten them in their backyards wandering through um, as they're looking for a place to settle down. So you just never know. And here's another one, um, another mammal track here. This is a track that has a front track in size of about two and a quarter inches to four inches long, five cl clogged toes with the innermost toes set back and sometimes not even visible. So it can look like it has uh, four toes. And then the hind tracks are two to three inches in length. This one I didn't always have on this presentation, but I added it recently because this is another mammal that is expanding in its range. And that is going to be your fisher, sometimes known as the fisher cat. And they are definitely expanding in their range. It's a large, 
weasel type of animal. They can climb trees, um, but they are becoming more and more common. So thought I would add them to this presentation as well. Um, so that is your Fisher cat. Uh, this one's pretty easy to identify here. We just have one species really that'll make a track like this uh, with the hoof print. So this is a two-toed hoof print up to three to four inches with strides of 12 to 20 inches long. They tend to step their back hoof into the track of their front hoof, creating an overlapping track. If you do any kind of hiking anywhere in the area, probably see these pretty often. That is going to be our white-tailed deer. So lots of those around. And so those are some mammal tracks, but then there's also other tracks you might find out there. Um, this track, your typical kind of bird track, but it's quite large. So it can be about four inches long. Another one common in backyards, the American crow. So they can leave some pretty big tracks. Uh, we were talking earlier, I think it was just earlier in this week, um, about ravens and American crows and uh, fish crows and how they can all look pretty similar. Um, but even the American crow can have some pretty large tracks. So they can be quite a pretty large bird. So look for American crow tracks in your backyard. Here's another large bird track you can see with the measuring tape there. It's about seven, eight inches long. Uh, three toes that are pretty prominent. And then you can see even back here, there's a little um, there's a little kind of dot there from its back leg, uh, a turkey. So you never know. Some people do get turkey in their backyard and they will leave these tracks in the snow. Quite, quite large bird tracks here. And then there's lots of uh, birds with the webbed feet. So if you're out looking uh, for ducks and that kind of a thing, um, take a look and see what kind of tracks you might find. Usually if they're a webbed foot, a couple inches long, it's a, it's a pretty good bet that it is a gull, like this ring-billed gull here. Uh, other tracks that are pretty common, four to five inches long, again, webbed feet, Canada goose, uh, another really common waterfowl species you can find here. But you might even happen upon something like this. Sometimes, even in your own backyard, you might get something maybe not this distinctive, but if you see a feather pattern like this, any kind of a wing pattern, or tail feather pattern, um, that's a sign that something something definitely happened. And uh, if you if you look here, you can see not only the feather pattern, you can see where two legs came down into the snow here, right in the middle. And you can also see that there was tracks from something else that seemed to be have been running away. Um, this is from usually some kind of bird of prey, maybe not a snowy owl. That's like this in this picture, um, but birds like great horned owl that we've got here, barred owl that are actively hunting at night, even screech owl are out there. Um, but during the day, it might be caused from something like a Cooper's hawk. So a lot of you guys have been getting Cooper's hawks or the smaller sharp shin hawks. So you might find some kind of feather patterns like this in your snow from those birds going after as far as Cooper's hawks and sharp shinned hawks go, going after other birds. Um, if it's going after a mammal, like this photo would show, could be something like a red-tailed hawk. So birds of prey can leave some, um, some tracks in the snow, especially this time of the year, especially with a bunch of them being in people's backyards. So another just kind of different animal track. And then finally, there's some that you can see out there in the spring and summer months that I thought I would show as well. This one here, typical by ponds, especially um, kind of two rows of, of footprints. And in the middle there, you can see there's a tail that has been dragged through the mud. And it looks like it came out of the water or was going back in. And this is your typical pattern of a snapping turtle. Usually snapping turtles live in their ponds for most of their life. Really the only time that they leave is if the pond starts to dry out and they have to find a new place to go. Um, or more commonly is when the female goes to lay her eggs. So she'll leave the pond to lay her eggs. Um, usually they'll, they'll go to somewhere that has more of a sandy kind of soil. They'll dig a little nest, just like your, a sea turtle would, lay their eggs, and then go back to the pond. So if you ever see a snapping turtle, 
that is not in the water. That's usually what's happening. So they can be pretty, pretty nasty during those times because they are determined to lay those eggs. So um, there's certain times in the summer where all of a sudden you'll see snapping turtles trying to cross the road and that kind of a thing. That's what they're doing. They're females that are going to lay their eggs. So um, that is your typical snapping turtle pattern. So there's your, there's a snapping turtle right there. Um, if you're anywhere that has kind of like a sandy type of soil, you might see some little swivels and, and zigzags through the sand or through um, the gravel or the dirt. Snakes like this garter snake are super common and they will leave little tracks as well. So kind of little squiggles and zigzags um, are common snake patterns. And if you're especially further down south, you might see this, again, kind of alternating little prints with a tail drag in the center. Um, lizards, like this is an eastern fence lizard. They're going to be more common down south and in the Carolinas. We don't really have them. We don't have them here in upstate New York, but um, they are common in the east coast. So uh, you might just see little lizard tracks as well. So tracks for all kinds of different animals. Right now, the most common ones you'll see are, of course, the mammal tracks because the reptiles are hibernating right now. They are buried in the mud or under some leaf litter in the woods until the spring. So if anybody has any questions, you can throw those in the comments. Again, we're looking for if you have suggestions on topics you'd like us to cover. Now is the time to ask if you think of any because we are doing our calendar for the year ahead. We're getting all uh, all of our calendar organized right now. Um, if you have questions, you can throw them in there or any kind of sightings you have. Definitely throw them in the comments. Rhonda is on and she says she's watching from Canandaigua. Uh, Margaret is on, says very interesting. Ed is on. He says, good morning, all. Last year, we had some interesting tracks in the snow. One set of prints seemed to be a padded cat-like foot with retractable claws, but too large at about two inch diameter for a domestic cat. The stride was about three feet and went in a straight line, each foot in a separate track. My guess was maybe a bobcat, but the footprint seemed too small for that. We saw it a number of times through the winter. I'll try to post a photo to Facebook for discussion later. Ooh, yes, very exciting. So yeah, I didn't put every kind of track that you might find in the area on this talk, um, Bobcats being one of them, but there are different books. I mean, you can find different track guides online. I'm sure you can, you can look them up. We do have some different track books that do have really all of the tracks you would find in the area. We've got this, um, here, is this we've got this book the animal tracks of the great lakes this is a kind of like a small compact book but it goes through all the different species that you could find their tracks and then what i like about it especially is at the end it compares them all together so say you weren't sure if you've got yourself a you know red fox track is it a gray fox track is it a coyote track um you can see them all lined up next to each other so it makes for easy comparison so that is the animal tracks of the great lakes you might be familiar we've got th this book too called the track finder same kind of idea it helps you identify the track that you're seeing you might be familiar with these books they make up a, a tree finder which is really popular um, they make fern finders winter tree finders but there's also this book so this is the track finder and basically it takes you step by step so it says you know how many feet are on the toes can you see claws and so it it takes all of that information and it'll lead you to whatever animal it is which will not be a plains pocket gopher in our area, but you get the idea. It'll show you which um, which animal you have. So this is a really cool, cool book here. So it shows you the track and the range, and it helps you narrow it down based on the characteristics of the track you're seeing. So uh, we do have track guides, but even if you have a uh, any kind of a mammal guide, there's usually some kind of track feature in there. Like even these Peterson, we've got this Peterson First Guide to Mammals, which are popular books for kids, um, but they're also good for adults. It's like a really good intro book um, as far as talking about the different mammals that you can find around. And some of them even do have, not for every species, but it's kind of hard to see there, but there are track patterns and it'll show what the track looks like. So it's not 
as thorough as the the track finder books are um, but but there is some information in there as well and then as you go up with different bigger books like this is the peterson mammals guide so this is much much more substantial book um, this will have more information about tracks in them as well but this is of all of north america so that could be a little bit overwhelming so if you're looking for something that's um a little bit less we do have the animal tracks of great lakes and then this track finder is for eastern north america so we do have that but um yeah this peterson guide has track information on it and it also has um if you've spent any time kind of like walking walking through nature or the outdoors you might come across the skull of an animal and it has a huge guide about all of the different mammal skulls you might find so just in case you're looking for something like that um, it's all in that uh, peterson mammals guide uh, so uh, dog named boo is on says beautiful about some of the different animals we saw on here today duster's on says hello um hello duster she says have them here i think that was in reference to the black bear when we were talking about the black bear tracks and uh wow never saw them i think is about the fisher so yes fisher are definitely around and expanding their ranges duster also says we get lots of crows yes yes lots of crows around um rhonda is on and says i have most of the animals you have talked about on my seven acres in the bristol hills yes i would imagine that um, unfortunately, most of the mice I see are in my attic. After a number of years, uh, after a number of years absence, a red fox is again in residence. Okay, so maybe that that red fox will take care of some of those those mice. Yeah, that's that's the unfortunate thing when you see the evidence of mice in your house and not outdoors not ideal um, but you're not alone with that i'm sure uh rhonda says i saw my first cooper's hawk last week in a tree near my bird feeder i believe it yes especially in the winter months um people are seeing lots of cooper's hawks um a dog named boo says great presentation Ron. thank you very much um lynn says we had a possum in our backyard that actually played possum when our dogs ran out so yeah we were showing um the possum track and possums are known to actually feign feign death and they'll uh almost pass out and they look dead and they'll even sometimes emit a foul smelling odor so it seems like they're dead um, but they're not they are just quote unquote playing possum and um they will they will um they will do that uh, as a as a defense mechanism, so the animal thinks that they're dead and they'll leave them alone. So Lynn had that really neat experience here with possum uh, when it had an encounter with her dogs. Um, Oriana is on. She says hello, watching from Northern Ontario, Canada. We have had a barred owl hanging around the property. I've been looking in snow for all different tracks. I have 15 bird feeding stations. So Oriana might with that barred owl in the area uh, might have a good chance of seeing some tracks of something like this of that owl going after something um, they're quite active at night all winter long you might even hear them hooting this time of the year we've had some reports of people hearing some barred owls doing calls of screech owls having some calls making some calls right now so um, really cool sightings that you have there and as far as those 15 bird feeding stations go you probably have a lot of bird tracks and you might even get some uh, some cooper's hawk or sharpshin hawk action there with those feeders uh dog named boo says i do have coyotes often through my yard as well as red fox then again i live along the cuyahoga valley i'm not sure if i'm saying that right uh, national park in ohio so it sounds like a really good habitat for the fox and coyote. Um, Oriana says, great presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Mohammed Azan says, good afternoon from the UK. Good, good afternoon. So probably not too many tracks that you'll see on here in the UK, except those, those red fox. I think you guys have red fox out there. So um, hopefully that is helpful for you. Timothy Zanz is very interesting program. Thank you very much. And Timothy also says we had a Cooper's Hawk land on the fence right next to our hot tub, not 10 feet from us. Cool. So uh, Timothy had an experience there with a Cooper's Hawk. So very, very neat. Uh, Mohammed says I get foxes coming into my garden and several types of birds. So Mohammed does have those foxes even out in the, red, uh, in the, the UK, red fox, 
are actually an introduced species. So they um, they weren't here originally. They were introduced for hunting purposes and have really um, naturalized here. So I believe that you guys have them out there as well. So very cool. I don't know if we've ever had anyone from the UK on here before. So I'm glad you found us. So it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions for the day. If you have jigsaw puzzles that you are uh, wanting to get rid of and not sure what to do with, we do have our jigsaw puzzle swap going on all weekend uh, to uh, here at the birdhouse. So that is going on all weekend long. Um, looks like Oriana just popped on. How can we send pics for your next show? You can do those a couple different ways. You can send them to us on our Facebook page. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, our Facebook uh, page is the birdhouse NY. So if you look that up, you should be able to find us. Um, you can look for our logo. I think I can show you our logo here in the corner just popped up um so if you look for our logo there with um with the little bird perched on the birdhouse that that is us so you can send in um, your photos that way or you can always email them to us as well and i will put in our email address here so you can uh, easily write that down. Our email address is info at the birdhouseny.com. Here it is at the bottom. So you can send your photos in that way as well. So probably the easiest way is on Facebook and we can share it from there. Um, we also do have an Instagram page. Again, same, kind of, uh, same URL, it's the birdhouseny is what you can look up to find us. And you can find our, when you see our little logo there, you know it's us. You can send your photos via Instagram as well if that's easier. Um, or just email them over to info at the birdhouseny.com. Um, so let's see, Duster is also on. She says, I do have a screech owl lining the side of my house. So uh, Duster has a screech owl uh, living on the side of her house, she says. Um, and she and Mohammed are saying hello. And Oriana says, thanks. So yes, you can send in your photos here to info at the birdhouse, ny.com. You can always send them in there. Um, you can share them on our Facebook page and um, we can share those and you can see if there's any chatter or if you're looking for identification of a bird, you can always put them on Facebook and you can get some help there or you can send them to, a, to us on our Instagram page. So several different ways to do it. So we always appreciate that. If you've got photos, send them on over and we will share them uh, with our next um their next talk here. So looks like that's everyone's comments and questions for the day. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back on Tuesday with another broadcast. And until then, have a great weekend and we will talk to you.